Soul City Entertainment. I feel like I should be getting some sort of sponsorship for Old Smokey because <laughs> I am I am in love with this whisk this this moonshine. Uh yes, yeah, moonshine actually. So, mm-hmm. I've been in trouble. So, yo, what's up everybody? Welcome to another episode of the Talk My Credo podcast. This is episode 95. We are inching our way to 100. 100. And look, I'm your boy Dante here with my fam in the building. KT is here. Nasu Nuru is in the building. Nas, how you doing, man? Happy Monday. If you can say that for a Monday. Happy Monday. Monday is good. It's a good leg day, of course, on Monday. Uh, shout out to the Dolphins. Big win versus the Bills. Uh, what else I want to say? One more thing, real quick. If I could just use 30 seconds of your time. Remember, you can always go to the business page of Facebook, Talk My Credo. And you can always follow the host of the Talk My Credo podcast at Dante Credo on IG. That's Instagram for those who don't know those initials. But check me out, though. To the Black Pot Awards, just want to say a couple things to you real fast. Uh-huh. To the panelists, because this is different. Usually they would make you pay X amount of dollars to submit your podcast, and they would ask your followers to vote you in to be a winner which is uh-huh. complete BS, and that's why I wouldn't support that movement. Now, what they did this year is they got panelists, and you know who I am, and you know if there's two words about me, work ethic. Oh, I research uh-huh. y'all, all right? Now, I see that some of you have aspirations on podcasting or think that you've been here for a while so you can say a thing or two about podcasting. I'm not even going to be mad at you. One of them was actually a, a, a candidate to be a politician, not even an actual politician, but she got 10,000 followers and she liked a couple of my stories. So you cool with me, sister. I'm not even going to say your name yet, but I just want to let you know something, Dante. So I'll let you know something, KT. I DM'd every single one of them this morning with the podcast. I cared less. All right. Y'all going to know about what's going on here regardless. And my thing is this, I would pay money to submit my equipment, submit my equipment, submit my episodes, but at least have somebody on the panel that works for Odyssey or Pineapple Street Podcasting or Complex, somewhere where we can be employed so we can show people our skill set. That's all I want to say. That's all I want to say. Hello, everyone. You know what? And well, let's go ahead and dive right into it. But, but KT, how you doing, girl? What's up? I'm good. Glad to be back. Glad to be back. Glad to have you back. So let's dive right into it. So I saw the post and I knew something spicy was happening. I knew something spicy would happen. So, you know, so I'm looking around and I'm like, you know what? I don't know the the specifics, but I know it's pertaining to something that we're all too familiar with as far as Nas, you and I, as far as the grassroots underground artists that got to work through things. And then we get approached or come across quote unquote opportunities where people position themselves to be something they're really not to where it seems like you're just trying to leech off those who are actually putting in legwork so you can position yourself to be something again that you're not. So I was waiting for the, the specifics. So for those who are listening, I don't even know your names yet, but um, yes, I agree. Unless you are able to put us in the positions that will actually cause us to <coughs> grow, to actually gain a particular following, not just for you, but for us. And, and I'm, I mean more than just putting us in your stories. I mean more than just making a quote unquote Facebook post or making a, sh- uh, a YouTube short or a TikTok video. I'm talking about some real marketing that put us in front of real eyes that can actually make some changes for us. I'm not interested. Been there, done that in many different platforms, stepped in many different rooms where y'all offered that. I'm just not with it. But since you're here, go ahead and watch us work and see how, how the real people get it in. All right. So y'all, y'all check this out. Check this out. Let's go ahead and dive right into this because, you know, I've been going for a while. So I wanted to give you all a quick update. Since we're talking about positioning yourselves to be something that you're not, you know, we, we talked about that AI rapper that was signed to a record deal, the Capitol Records, that effing maker guy. I didn't put this on the script, but I just read it and I was like, oh, yeah, I forgot to give the update. Well, basically, that pl- that plug was pulled a couple of weeks after the, the deal was was created. And basically... For those who don't remember, I think an episode or two ago, we talked about Effin Maker, where he was the artificial intelligence rapper, 10 million followers on TikTok, signed to a record deal with only three songs. Only had three songs out, but he was signed to a record deal. But he had a following. He was inspired by Takashi 6 9 with the look, 
got a voice to rap the songs and then they got a record deal. But people did some digging to find out what was going on with this effort maker guy and realized, well, it was created by a white guy along with an Asian guy. And they got a, another rapper guy to rap like Takashi 6 9 And they were kind of outraged about it. And they basically <clears throat> put up so much of an outrage Capitol Records pulled that record deal and then all these other things unraveled as far as the character of the people who created this. Basically, they called it digital blackface, which was very new for me, but I kind of get it. <laughs> I kind of get it. Like, oh, digital blackface. All right, that, that's a new one, but hey, it is what it is. But that's just an update. I, I don't have uh, a, uh, an opinion either way, but I know Nas, we talked about it. So, FMA got canceled, if you will. Yes. In, 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 any take on that? Is that a yay or a nay? Or, um, well, I mean, it's it's a. I mean, I don't want to say yay or nay. It is a what we call in third grade cause and effect. Cause and effect. This yep. is the Robert Sarver. This is the Donald Sterling. Okay. No disrespect mm-hmm. to the Asian community. No disrespect to our white community. White people, you know, late night flight. Hey, listen, I'm not trying to be a racist no more. Try it. Look, I got a book. Yes. I got. Where's my book that I don't really respect, but I, but I'm, I'm going to have it here a lot. Stand back, Ray J. No, Ray J is uh-huh. right. Ray J say hi to Kim T. They see him all the time. All right, anyway. So the book is called How to Be an Anti-Racist. Now, uh-huh. I would impl- I would tell people to read the, f- the first 15 pages so they can close it and don't read it no more like I did, okay? Because... What? <laughs> what? <laughs> speak, speak it, speaking of which, no, speaking ahead. of which, I, I want to give my own little shout out. I'm okay. going to my shout out. I'm going to give my shout out to old Smokey. Old Smokey. And that old Smokey moonshine. Because mm. I'm going, I'm, I'm telling you right now, I don't know if I'm going to get through this whole podcast because, yeah. So last week, Yes. Wifey and I had had a little staycation. You know, we kind of went off the grid. Now, right. we, we didn't go anywhere extravagant. We stayed in the city. But every single day, we went out and did something. We ate somewhere new. We did something new. That's dope. And, you know, so at the end, was like, you know what? Let's let's hit up the, the liquor store. And let's just get a whole bunch of liquor. Let's just, let's just buy a bunch of stuff. And I saw Old Smokey's banana pudding flavored moonshine. And I was like, you know what? I don't even know what that tastes like or how that even can be conceptualized, but you know what? Fuck it. Let's do it. And I did it. And I think I'm in trouble. Cause I'm, yeah, I think I'm probably going to finish this doing this episode because it's just that good. I don't know how it works, but it worked. And it tastes like, not like out the box banana pudding, but it tastes like our banana pudding. Like what? Yeah, it's really good. Yeah. Can it I- tastes like, it, it tastes like our banana pudding. And uh, I, was like, I don't know how they did it. You may have to like, just send me a quick pic of that. So I can yeah. find out if I can get that delivered to my home. I'm yes. try- <clears throat> Why not? I'm gonna try some of that. Why not? Yeah. But, but just go back to FM Mecca again. Yeah. It's Sarver, it's Donald Sterling, white people, you know you can't do that. It's just look, you can't do it. I get it. You were you're trying to be quote unquote culturally appropriate, because that's just what that is, and you're and it's simulated, but you already know that's that's trouble from the rip. Trouble from the rip. And it's like, come on now, you know better. And Even a, though they got a quote unquote, you know, uh, black uh, rapper to to rap the lyrics, but it's their idea. It was their skits, like he, like the rapper literally followed their script. And it's like, come on, y'all, like come on, you know better, you, you know, know better, and you knew this would come to come to light. Yeah. Just because a white, a black, and an Asian wanted to put this out doesn't mean that y'all the Neptunes too. We can't do this anymore. Nope, <laughs> not anymore. There's only one Neptunes. <laughs> you can't do it. Not like this. At least not like this. So, you know, in, in, <laughs> in other hilarity, because there, there's a topic that I really want to get to and kind of break down. But, um, you know, Stacey Dash, and I've had my takes on Stacey Dash. Um, probably watched. one of my, yeah, one of my most <laughs> most watched videos on the Talk My Credo channel. Y'all, y'all check that out, Talk My Credo at, you, at, at YouTube. You know, basically, she, she, she wants to get back. She wants to get a black card back. And she continues to do things that, you know, puts forth effort to be accepted back to the cookout. You know, now she wants to date a black man and she, you know, denounced her uh, alliance and allegiance with Trump. And then she went on this reality show trying to, you know, show off her culture where she didn't do so well. But now she's back and she wants to grieve with you guys. And in this particular video she put up, 
She is grieving because she just found out, just found out, like recently, like within days, that DMX passed away. And um, she goes on TikTok and she puts up this video here. And let's just take a listen to her pain as she reaches out and relates to the culture. Okay, uh, I'm ashamed. I, I didn't know. I didn't know DMX died. I didn't know. From a cocaine overdose. I am. I am today six years and one month clean. It breaks my heart. It breaks my heart. He lost to it. He lost. He lost to that demon of addiction. Please. Please don't lose. Uh, we just saw Stacy Dash break down and let us know that she just found out that DMX passed away about 18 months later. So, Nas, does your heart reach out to her? And do you just understand and feel her pain? Because she's telling us, don't lose the, the, the fight with the demon, as she called it, of addiction. What do you think? So I have a few things, not a few, just actually two things. Number one, I wanted to do a new segment within the segment, which is called uh -huh. Read What I Text You. But the okay. only reason why we're not going to do it is because, I'm going to be honest with you, and I feel uh -huh. bad that I'm saying this, because I wish it was KT and Keisha here, because I will only text it to you, because I feel like you're the only one that would do the joke justice. Okay. <laughs> I feel like Keisha right. would have third word, and KT would just be solid as a mouse about it and be like, I can't believe he just said that shit. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> the disrespect. The disrespect. So, right. Here's what I want to say. First of all, I have to be honest with you. Stacy Dash looks like a very good white woman. My God, she looks like the woman from American Pie. Yeah, I, I will say that... Um, one was the yeah. one that wanted Jason Biggs that had the, uh, you know, the... the, the um, the foreign exchange student. Yep. She looks yep. like her right now. Just want to put that out there. And here mm -hmm. goes my book, and I'll leave everything alone. You got to think about this. Here we go. You ready? Here we go. Skin bleaching is a hell of a drug that can leave you clueless. I can't stand you. <laughs> so that's, I can't stand you. <laughs> All right. So. Um, <laughs> in other news, now he, here is here is something where I'm going to give some of their flowers here because I've said I've had a lot of jokes for, her, for for this woman, and I've had a lot of criticism for this woman. But my, as they say, praise and support needs to be as loud as my uh, perceived disrespect. So Shikari Richardson, I'm here to give you your flowers because in a recent race. She has won a race, actually. She has won a race. Furthermore, she won in a race that included Elaine Thompson Hera. She beat Elaine Thompson Hera in a race. And I'm here to give her her flowers. There's a quick article that I want to read. It's just a couple paragraphs, but it says, Embattled track and field star. I wouldn't say embattled, but you know, these are white people writing. But, um, but I love y'all. I love y'all. I do. And, I, and I'm, I'm also going to do better. I promise you, I'm going to do better. <laughs> I'm going to do better. I promise you. And battle track and field star Shakari Richardson is on the road to a comeback. And the first step is getting a big win to remind everyone how good she is. According to Let's Run, the U.S. sprinter defeated Jamaican Olympic champion Elaine Thompson Hera in the women's 100 meters at the Spitzen meet in Lucerne. Switzerland. I probably mispronounced that, but she was in Switzerland when she did it. This was a World Athletics Continental Tour Silver competition. 
which is the second level of the tier below the elite diamond league. In baseball terms, this is the minor leagues, but that's besides the point. In cold, wet conditions, Richardson ran an 11.29, beating the gold medalist by zero by 0 0.01 tenths of a second. And then American Solera Barnes finished third with a time of 11.4. Now, the controversial athlete hasn't competed since the U.S. Championships in June, where she failed to qualify for the World Championships. That was the last time I mentioned her. I roasted her pretty bad about it. And then she came out, was like, listen, y'all need to show more respect to the athletes, blah, 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 after she didn't qualify. Meanwhile, Thompson Harris picked up a bronze at the World and gold at the Commonwealth Games. Now, with all that being said, it doesn't matter. In this race, she won, regardless of it being cold, regardless of being wet. You step on that on that court, you step on that track, you step on that field, then it's, it's all systems go. It doesn't matter. She won that race. So I am here personally to say congratulations, Shakari. I hope this is a turning point, regardless of the magnitude of the meet. They call it the minor leagues. It doesn't even matter. It was a race that the Olympic, the world fastest, most decorated woman at the time won is recognized you beat her so congratulations i hope this is the first of a long string of wins where you solidify yourself as that girl as you pronounced yourself when you first hit the scene so i'll open this up nas in any words of encouragement or criticism for shakari richardson because she won a race and she beat elaine thompson harry to do it what do you think first of all i want to say how proud i am of you for being like me uh -huh. Okay. Yes. Because on the late night flight, uh, I had to give uh, mine to say flowers, but I, I had to just say, hey, look, listen, I got a couple people wrong. Well, really one wrong. This I don't know about. Mm -hmm. it. But Sean Watson, I got wrong. And and uh -huh. you know what? I applaud you, cousin, because you are here to say, you know what? Look, don't, I'm not like that with Shikari. When she wins, I'm going to be the one to report it. I'm Adrian Wojnarowski. You are uh -huh. Raheem. Wojnowski. There you go. Connor, <laughs> Raheem Wojnowski. There you go. There we go. There we go. Now, I have been officially crowned. Let's go. Check me out. Forbes magazine. Say Forbes magazine. I'm sorry. Forbes.com. We live in the internet world. So I have a quick article because it goes with my joke. Here we go. All right. Uh -huh. Although the federal council legalized cannabis for medical purposes, it only allows products containing high levels of CBD with less than, get this y'all, 1% THC, which is the limit set for the hemp industry. Now check this out. What did my homegirl Shikari get sent home for? THC. You can smoke all the shit you want in Switzerland, girl. Might as well play for them. <laughs> Fuck America, baby. You go ahead and put that Switzerland jacket on, because that's where you need to be, baby. This ain't no <laughs> Britney Grotter situation, no disrespect. We just saying that maybe you may want to go play for Switzerland, all right? And then you can go, and then, like, when you run and you win, I can put that um Lil Kim lyric in the background on my Instagram stories. Like, I got land in Switzerland, even got sand ah. in Maryland, Bahamas ah. in Spain. Maybe it's a sugar curry thing. Can't you tell by the medals on my ring? All that bullshit. You know what I'm saying? That's how many times I want to run. 21 and another one and another one and another one. 24. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway. Get the point. <laughs> I mean, you know, I could get down with that. I, I'm, I'm just saying. So maybe. A little team switch, maybe a LeBron to Miami type of thing should yeah. happen yeah. for Shikari. That's all I'm saying. I, yeah. I, 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 I'm with that. Sure, I'm about to take my talents. <laughs> <laughs> What's my? Here's my impression of Shikari in taking the flight to Switzerland. <laughs> I, her, her theme song should be I Got Five on it. All right, so, <laughs> so, so KT, KT, is this a, do you think this is a turning point for Shikari? Like, do you think this is like the, the win she needed to kind of get back on track or maybe this was just a one-off? What do you think? I don't know. I wish her much success. Um, but, you know, We'll, we'll see. We'll see. I don't really, you know, I ain't trying to we'll tear see. another black I, woman see, down. I, I, or nothing. I think you have you the, the, yeah, I, I get it. I get it. 
And I, I think you have the, the the most unbiased thing where it's like, you know what? It's cool, but let, let's, let's just see what happens next. All right. One step at a time, you know, and I mm-hmm. get that. That's probably the way that I should do it. Um, but I'm trying to be as supportive as I've been critical of her. So I'm like, okay, m- maybe this is the win she needed. Whereas like, regardless of the situation, you've seen yourself and felt yourself cross that finish line before the ones who've been whooping your ass for the last couple of years. <laughs> you've finally seen that. So maybe that's the monkey you need to get off your back. And yep. now, you know, and, and, and now this is that, all right, I I can I can I can beat these bitches. No no offense, offen- you know, intended. But I can I can beat these broads. So I right, let's let's go. Let's get back it. to the lab. Let's work. I'm so, about to smoke y'all. <laughs> so I'm about to smoke y'all. <laughs> mm. yeah. I got five on it. I- <laughs> All right, listen, listen. It's time to play that game that we all know and love. Let's play a little dope a doo So y'all listen, y'all check this out. And I'm gonna start and I'm gonna start with this one. I'm gonna start with this one. <laughs> there, there's a particular school district that I, I don't I don't know about y'all, but I'm old enough to where I remember when the school that I attended actually practiced what I'm about to read to y'all. So there's a, a Missouri school district reinstate spanking students as a last resort. The short article reads that a Missouri school district had decided to reinstate corporal punishment in its classrooms, allowing students to be punished with a paddle under a new policy. The school board approved the policy in June and notified parents that Missouri Cassville School District is bringing back spanking, a disciplinary measure abandoned by the district in 01, according to Springfield News. The change to reinstate spanking came after a survey sent to the parents last year revealed they wanted additional discipline and it was one of their major concerns so administrators will implement corporate punishment as a last resort if other disciplinary measures do not work the punishment will only be used in a reasonable form upon the recommendation of the principal so missouri wants to whoop your kids Nas, if you was in missouri would this be dope or would this be doo-doo before i answer that question i just want to make sure because you know we have R. Kelly, we have Larry Nassar. I just I just want to make sure <laughs> that I want to. I need specifics. We're talking about high school or elementary school. Which which school is giving out the whippings? All I don't see anything specific. I just see the school district. That's all oh. I see. Oh really? Yep. Oh yeah. Well, well, listen. I just want to put this out there. I don't want nobody to get upset with me. I'm 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 just a person that is observant. I'm not even smart. I'm just observant. And I have been reading a lot of things in the news when it comes to <clears throat> teachers and uh, students. And I just want to say that if they finally found out what all the high school football players like to do as their fetish, then go ahead and do what you want to do. Sounds like some, what you want to give somebody some spankings. Uh, Miss Haddish, Miss Haddish, I've been a bad boy today. Well, let's put on that uh, YouTube video. Let's get this thing going. Uh huh. <laughs> exactly. All right. So listen, I I'm awful whooping your kids' ass. So hey, cause that's what a lot of y'all kids need anyway. You need a good old ass whooping. So mm-hmm. hey, by all means. But at the same time, this is Missouri, so I also understand what KT's coming from. That okay. all it takes is just that it's one. Not, huh? No, I'm not having it. I'm not having it. You know what? I'm, we're in your business. New segment in your business on dope or doodle. I said dope or doodle. Do or dope or doodle. Uh-huh. You said uh-huh. you're in your business. Did you have a PTA session or something like that with your son? I sure did. Absolutely. Can we know the yep. aftermath of that right now only because we talked about whipping kids' asses? <laughs> Actually, that is a great point. That is a great point. So um, great segue. recently I had a little PTA uh, yeah. meeting with uh, my son who was uh, having some disciplinary issues mm-hmm. at the school. Now, yeah. here is the thing when it comes to children. This is why yeah. I kind of, su- well, it's not kind of, why I support this because- yes. Children know what they can get away with when they're around certain people or in a certain environment. So I hear these things about the behavior of my son that I know he does not do around me because he know I don't play that shit. So right. behavioral order, structure, you know, that, that's just what that's what the men's all about. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> structure order, you want you you want all that nurture, mommy, mommy bullshit. Go to your mama. I'm here for that. Nigga, get, 
All right. But anyway, uh, <laughs> but to get your ass, you better get your shit together, little nigga. The fuck you think? All right, but <laughs> but but I also understand again. Children are also very smart. They're, they're very smart. So again, they they understand or feel like they can get away with certain things with certain people. So while he was at the school, he was doing things that he know that I don't approve of because when they said that there was going to contact me, oh, he broke down. He had a full meltdown because he knew he was in trouble. So um, after we figure out what issues he was having and the many attempts of them trying to get him to behave and be back into the order of, of the class being taught and to not be disruptive. Yeah. 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 I did. Yeah, I did. I surely did. I, I surely did. You know what I did. Uh-huh. Mean. Yep. Uh huh. Yep. You know exactly what I did mean. Yes. Um, <laughs> so I sure did. I'm gonna have to say do back, Yes, I'm, I'm with you. Yes. Yeah. So okay. back to that though. You're a good uh-huh. father. Yes. The thing is, <laughs> I feel like yes. that can get out of hand real quick. I agree because not all these teachers have the self control. You know what I mean. Uh-huh. And then you're going to get some of these white teachers trying to whip black churn like but they're trying to, they drawing this, on their ancestors trying to whip black children. And I don't know. This, on, this is why, again, I, I don't believe that will happen if it works the way I remember it working when I was coming up in school. And damn, I'm giving away my age. But the the maybe spankings or whatever, it, it I know, but... <laughs> It never happened without one, the parent being contacted. So, you know, I'm, I'm not going to lie. I also, with my son, yes, things happened the way it needed to be, ha- that it needed to happen. But also, I do give him a little grace because I also understand that he's my son. And I know that uh, when I was in school, um, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so I have personal experiences as well. Um, and I remember, um, that happened to me twice and only twice because after the second time, when I got home, I got one from my daddy. And then after that, I was a, a, a pristine student. I really was. Um, but what happened was their process was, okay, we tried this. We did that. We did that. Now we're going to contact your parents and we're going to lay the option. Uh, is this an option? My dad was on the phone. He said, yes, you can. You know, so I, I don't feel like it's just like, oh, you got out of line. Come here, little nigga. And then you start whooping the ass. No, th- th- there is a process that I believe that would be followed. Um, even like I said, back in the day, it was OK. We do have this option. Do you want this option executed? And it is up to the parents to yay or nay it. You know, that's how it it worked when I, that I remember. So I believe it'll work something similar to that. That's just my assumption. So that, that's why yeah. I don't feel like people would kind of go off the rails and even if it does then I, i'm sure you know something this sensitive you know is, is not something that will be easily um that'll be easily you know put under the rug or hidden or covered up or anything so um but there are a lot of people walking around in this world and why i think we are in the clown world now that you can tell people haven't been punched in the face before and you can tell people haven't had their ass whooped before and sure i think a little little um but what's that Bible scripture? I'm putting this all on the Bible. Yes, I sure am. Uh, that that spare the rod type thing. You know what I'm saying? All right. Spare the rod. But anyway, <laughs> yes, sir. I got exactly. You. exactly. I'll be the one. Exactly. I'll be the one dishing out the rod though, because I don't see, trust. Because you know what? I had an experience when I was younger. I got mm-hmm. paddled because I mixed up colors. I was oh. in preschool. Oh. Oh, I thought I thought you dated white. Brown and my mama. <laughs> oh no but yeah in, in preschool though yeah. yeah so you know i don't all the way trust because my mama was po'd because my mama was not notified yeah which is understandable mm-hmm. i remember one time and this has actually happened with Big E, and I tell him this story every now and then to remind him, you know, we shouldn't be as good of friends as we are right now. Even at his wedding, I stood up and told this story that we were in preschool and he was the bad one. And he bit this little white girl 
Oh, and of course the white girl cried and then the teacher comes over what happened what's the matter who did it and Eric pointed at me and said I did it and lied and I got the spanking yep and I was like and I hated him ever since but somehow we still ended up being friends and I was and I stood up at Big E's wedding and told that story and I said be glad that I'm telling the story right now because I should hate you big nigga alright so um, so I get it so I get it shout out to Big E um, <laughs> shout out to Big that's my boy that's my boy but all right, so moving on, moving on. <laughs> there is a particular instance going on in Nigeria that a lot of people are celebrating, but of course, it's not coming without its criticism because Nigeria has put a ban on all white and British models in their advertising. Again, a, a little quick uh, article here. It says, as of October first, which is in a few days. All advertisement and marketing communications in Nigeria must only use talent that is native to Nigeria and stated by the Advertising Regulatory Council of Nigeria. This makes Nigeria the first country to legally ban white talent from ad campaigns. This means companies will only be able to source local Nigerian talent, whether it's for modeling, acting, or voiceovers in their marketing campaigns. Current advertising and campaigns with foreigners can continue, but moving forward, there would be no new permits for ads consisting of those foreign to Nigeria. So I need to ask you guys. Now this also people brought up the uh, instance that happened a few years ago, I think in 2018 where Ethiopia kind of passed in a different spirit, if you will, where they banned foreigners from adopting their children, you know, and, and a lot of other African countries have done this as well, but Ethiopia was the big one that made it a, a, a regulation. Uh, back in 2018, if I'm not mistaken. So I ask you, Nas, when Nigeria's like, nah, in, in Trump fashion, since you do the Trump thing, America first, Nigeria's like, nah, it's Nigeria first. Anything that comes across our advertising campaigns, you will use someone of Nigerian descent. Do you think this is dope? Do you think this is doo-doo? Thank you. Thank you, Abdul. You have been a great host <laughs> on the Talk My Crudo podcast. I appreciate you. I appreciate you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Okay. President. Okay. I'm, I'm glad you know that I am the real president. You didn't call me former like you did last time, Abdul. I appreciate you. I appreciate yes. you. Okay. When you run up in the Capitol, you know I am a winner. Okay. okay. Yes. Okay. Yes, you are. So, now, so here's the thing. Here's the thing. I want to say this is dope, but I'm, I'm going to hold my dope back. I'm not going to call it doodle. I'm going to just stand firm and just not take a shit. Here's the thing. Uh-huh. I can't say that you're willing to ban quote unquote white models and white talent until you get that 64 foot white Jesus, white marble Jesus outside of uh, Nigeria. Once you get that outside, then I'll, I'll start respecting your swagger a little bit. All right. Oh. And then be with the, well, it's just the Jesus. It kind of looked black. Listen, you made it white marble. You should have painted it. Sorry. Yeah. You should have painted it. Should have painted it. <laughs> Because when I look at it, I'm going to uh-huh. say, damn, yo, who is the lead singer of Leonard Skinner in Jesus outfit? That's what I'm going to say. <laughs> All right? So, now, here's the thing. Technically, that's pretty dope. Because imagine, bro, you're in Shelby. Imagine this, bro. Imagine if Shelby turned themselves into some arts district. Uh-huh. Just Let's just see how that goes. They just turned themselves into an art district. And they're focused mm-hmm. on, get this, y'all, local Talent, because here's the realness of it all. Not because the baby's from North Carolina or uh, J. Cole's from North Carolina. There's a lot of talented people in North Carolina, period. That's it. I hate to use that word. All I sound like a hood rat. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> period. But, but realistic. And I, think it, and I think I heard a T. Of, I think you said period. Period. I think you said it with the T. <laughs> I was, I was like, like, <laughs> that's what I'm saying, because I was serious. I put a T in the end of serious. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> no, I'm dead ass. <laughs> There's talented people all over the world, all over each state in the United States of America. When I found out that Morgan Freeman was from Kentucky, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah, this is wild. This is wild. We're we're from all over the place, all right? And that's just how you got to look at it if you're Nigeria. First of all, those Nollywood movies, they make so much money off themselves. Why do, in no disrespect, white people, it's all love. You, They don't need you. America is a different policy. You know, we're all, you know, created equal until we talk to a white woman and then we're accused for rape. But you know how that go. 
You know what's up in this country. I'm just saying. Nigeria, like, we ain't going through all that. Switzerland, they like, they ain't going through that. New Zealand, they like, we ain't going through that, you know? And, and I I get that. I get that. But I'm, I'm still not, I'm going, I'm sorry. I don't I don't mean to disrespect your game. You have, a, you have a great game. I love your game. It's a great board game. I'm just being funny. It's a great game. <laughs> but I'm just saying that I can't call it dope or doo-doo until they take the 64-foot white Jesus out of Nigeria. I agree. And that is a really, really good point because, yeah, it stands tall as I as I recollect, as I recall correctly, to this day, in my Deontay Wilder voice, to this day. KT, do you think this is dope or doo-doo what Nigeria has done? I kind of, I never thought I would uh, hear myself say this, but I agree with Nas. Oh, oh. What are you talking oh. about? Hey, listen, don't make me run back these episodes and just show you <laughs> you agree with me. No, right? Like, don't do that. Like, don't do that. I, I'm not I'm not here for just to be here. I gotta right? take you another. Gotta take yeah, another you look drink. so traumatized, though. Look. <laughs> look up. Yeah. Chugging a big bottle down and everything. You know, you know, KT's mad because her mother gave me a like on a comment that I gave about her dog. I told KT that she's going to have to get a child because you're over here treating this little puppy like a son. I said, is this little Bow Wow, though? Like, really? Like, <laughs> like really? He in front of the bins. I thought it was MTV Cribs. I thought it was little Bow Wow out here. You know what I'm saying? So this is my son. Wait, did you call me your son? Oh, no, my No, my I boy. didn't. I said my handsome I boy. I had some boy. I was like, this motherfucker just graduated from sixth grade or something. Where he going? Oh, he, he he was clean though. I can't even lie. He was clean. He, 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 he was, was in a jump posted up clean. He, like, where he taking you? First well, of what, all, what's my name? Is it B- my Bentley? Yes, his name is mm-hmm. Bentley. Bentley yes. Asher Thomas. Asher. But anyway, <laughs> shut up. <laughs> <laughs> First of all. My niece took that picture because I had gone inside the store and that's why he was in the driver's seat. Okay. He was waiting on me to get back. Okay. So she took that picture and I thought it was cute. So I posted it. Okay. And it was a cute picture. It was, it was like, ah, because just the whole possible, like he was, he was sitting up like, all right, where's she at? Where she at? Like and he was, he was looking. He was ready, but it was a dope picture. He was dope. He was clean. He yeah. was clean though. And it, it yeah, probably also cost eighteen dollars to Uber to go back home because he like he was. You know what? No, nah. I'm just playing. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'll shut up. You, you, you had you had a question to answer. Who am I? Because you know what? When we get to talk about churn. He is my child, okay? Because this uterus is not giving birth to nothing, okay? Ain't nothing come up out this pussy. Okay? So he's the closest thing I'm going to get to a child, okay? He's my fur baby, and I am proud of it, okay? Please, you you, you just, just, just just give me a little bit of time, and I'm going to bring Mike and Jayden right on down there. And be like, hi, Auntie KT, see you later. Pew, I'm out of there. <laughs> And I'm gone. Look at here. <laughs> I'm the road runner when it comes to churn, okay? That uh, them churn will be back in your lap so quick. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just trying to tell you. Try it if you want to, like, sir. Like, yeah, you Try it if you want to. Because yeah. <laughs> Auntie KT is look, I already oh, inherited my. one. Okay. Uh-huh. And I love her to death. I'm glad that she's with me. But we not bringing no more on. No, no more. No more. She the only uh, one. Only one. And I love her dearly. Right. Yes. I'm, I'm still going to try it though. I'm going to try it. I- yeah, and <laughs> so- you will fail. Just just be <laughs> just be prepared, sir. Just be prepared. Be prepared. All right. Mhm. So KT agrees with Nas. Well, we, you know what? It, it sounds good, but I need to see some execution with it. I, I need to see some follow-up. Those are big, big statements, big words. I need to see some receipts with those. And honestly, that's where I am too. It sounds good because I understand the the intention of it. But at the same time, I need to see some follow-through before I can actually see, you know, if y'all are about what you're talking about or if this is a bunch of cap. 
All right, so listen. Because Nigerians talk big now. Yeah. Oh, if yeah. If it's one thing oh, yeah. a Nigerian is going to do, they're going to talk big, yeah. honey. They 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 going to talk. And they're gonna, now, you know, I understand in some cases, rightfully so. Yeah, they, they talk that big talk, but, mm-hmm. you know, they, they are, you know, I, I, I don't want to compare them to American blacks, but there are some qualities that I wish that as a whole that we would have. But I also understand, again, when people like to compare Nigerians to, uh, they call us foundational black Americans. I ain't really t- too big on the, you know, the separation and, and the who's better and blah, 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 blah. But, you know, there's just a particular history that, you know, one have that the other has it and uh, trauma and history, blah, 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 that I won't get into. If I, but, if I say something, I just want to say, yes. whenever Nigerian Americans start acting like that, I just pop in Black Panther and just sit back. <laughs> and that's all you need to do. Just, <laughs> yes. Yes. Oh, speaking of which, hey, I need y'all to go see Woman King. Y'all go see that movie. Y'all go see that movie. It was a dope movie. I loved it. Really? Get I do want to go see that. Yep. I loved it. Now, it's not historically accurate. Go mm-hmm. into it as a fictional movie. It's right. not true to life based on true events. Right. It's, it's, it's very loosely based. You mm-hmm. know, the names, the tribes, you know, this, that, and the third, they're real, but it, it's, it's a fiction movie. Don't, don't look at it as true to life. Um, but you know, first of all, Viola Davis, if she's in the movie, you can't go wrong. Cause she right. just she a right. phenomenal actress. Phenomenal. She, she is the, she, she is the goat, like just, um, just oh. absolutely phenomenal. And she kills it. Um, everybody, it, it was like, I'm not even going to lie. I got, you know, a few, a few of those scenes. I was like, yo, why is my eyes sweating a little bit? Cause Ooh. it was just, it would just, it was just a very proud. I was just v- very proud to see the images that it showed. And I'm not even talking about, you know, black people killing white people. I ain't even talking about that. Cause mm. again, I'm getting better. Right. I'm getting better, but just, you know, but getting the, the images, original stories, just great triumphant scenes. It really, the, the writing was good. The story I thought was good. If you go into it as a regular movie, like go into it, like you see in, Mid and black, or you going into a scene, Black Panther, you know, just it's not a real life, true to life movie, but just the plot, the story, even the actors and actresses, just very, very, very good movie. Um, I recommend y'all, y'all go to see it. Yeah, really dope movie. Yeah, I'm gonna so, go see uh, it. My, one of my SCA friends, uh, to go see The Woman King. Yes, 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 and I'm sure they will enjoy it. You thoroughly. know what. Lord have and mercy, ha- and, and have them thank. I thought thank we you. were going to retire the SCA. I really no, no, no. Uh, it's the woman king. Yeah, it's the what, woman king. You so know you know, that's, I'll be that's walking. it. That's it. That's I can't wait to strap on in the movie theater and feel comfortable. <laughs> Let's continue. I'm sorry, I shouldn't have said that. <laughs> oh God. Okay. All right, moving on, moving on. <laughs> I can't, that wasn't me this time. That wasn't me. All right, listen. Last segment of Dope Doodle. Now, we, we have to cover yet another Fuck Nigga Free remix. Now, on the Pod Vengeance episode, we talked about White Mike. That shit alone, and he man. did his, his dummy bitch thing. You know, we broke it down. We had our laughs, but there's one video I need y'all to watch. I need y'all to see because this one chick goes by the name of uh, TNFW. I don't even know what this stands for. Neek. TNFW Neek. She has a fuck nigga free FNF remix by Glorilla. And she titled hers BDF. Baby, Baby, Baby Daddy, Daddy Free. Oh, and you gotta check this out. And, oh, you play uh-huh. this video. What's the name of this artist again? TNFW Neek. TNFW Oh yeah, I don't, mm-hmm. yeah, I, don't, I stand for. Yeah, I don't even I don't know, but you know, for whatever reason, like they they put these things. There was the same reason why F and Maker named himself that. They put these little letters to signify they're part of whatever gang or group they're a part of, and then their na- their name. Um, but yeah, y'all y'all check this out. This is uh T N F W Unique with Baby Daddy Free. Murder. 
settle down, nigga selling all these dreams. He got one kid, two kid, three kid, four. Bitch, he cheaper by the dozen if his ass have any more. And I'm only 25, still got a couple years to go. I don't need a babysitter, cause this baby gotta go. It's a shortage on the milk, and them diapers be expensive. I ain't trying to be a milk, so I swallow all his children. I got hyphy in my blood, so you know I'm big pimping. Niggas trying to fall in love, tell them niggas I ain't with it. I didn't took care of niggas, now it's time to care for me. Rearrange the alphabets and skip the L's, I'm a P. I be on these bitches' necks, they like Nick, I can't breathe. VVS is in my Cuban, and my wrist is AP. Let's go. Yeah. Bitch, I got murder on my mind. All right, y'all. So, I mean, listen, now there, there's a few other F and F remixes that I've heard. Nas. Nice. Let's go. Dope <laughs> <laughs> All right, all right. I ain't going to hold you. This is doodle. But, but, listen. Listen, B B plus, not an A plus, B plus for presentation. Uh, they were C plus lyrics, but they were she kept the flow, kept the flow. It made sense. This was all baby daddy free lyrics. They definitely did this in front of the strip club. You saw the owner. <laughs> no, 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 no. It was not in front of the strip club. It was no. front of Planned Parenthood. Oh, it was in front of a Planned Parenthood. Like, Listen, see, see, hold up, hold up, hold up. I'm gonna show you. <laughs> yes, this was in front of. This is in front of Planned Parenthood. No. <laughs> well, shit. This woman, look, I'm gonna be honest with you. She's gonna have to make another song to solidify whatever she wants to be in the music game. Cause this, honestly, as a whole, this ain't it. It's very basic. Yeah. But, yep. but, like, again, the video in front of Planned Parenthood talking all that shit. And then the, look, she said she'd rather swallow the children. I don't know if you saw me fumbling yes. looking at my, my jacket. I was looking for my she card said. and trying to find out where my cash app at. I got I wanted to do something. I was I was quick. I'm sorry. I just turned into a god for like two <laughs> seconds. It's just like, yo, I don't even want her. I want the girl dancing on top of the car, but i, I but I still was just like, well, listen, she got it. Uh, I believe the term is, uh, I can't say the animal, but let's just say professional woman of the leather flock together. Let's say it like that. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. But yes, uh-huh. other than that is 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 doo-doo, but, but B plus for, for, for presentation and execution. I'm only saying it's doo-doo because she really can't rap it. She's not. Like, Snow Rilla was better than her. I mean, Snow Rilla. I'm so sorry. That's the white dude. Glow Rilla <laughs> is better than her. But, but again... Yeah. I like the effort. I saw where she was going. Theme, presentation, B plus. Still doo-doo. B plus. Still doo-doo. KT. She said she got murder on her mind. Um, what do you think? That dope or doo-doo? I'm flabbergasted. <laughs> um, I'm still on the swallow your children uh, part. That's funny because I'm now and then, I'm doing murder on my mind because that <laughs> yeah. yeah like she's like yeah abortion pretty much and this she is why we are going to save her mind. white lives we are not having this so what's on the boots does that say uh, Christian I I think it said I don't know if it said Christian but it said something hold on let me see if I can find it let me see if I can find it uh, yeah the hold up right it's up yeah I it says Chris. It says Chris, but there's another letter that looks like an I. It could be Dior. Mike Christian Laboot. Yeah, it, it could be Christian whatever. Dior. It could. I don't think it's Dior. Dior. Um, well, what's the yeah, but, KT, what's the problem with the boot? No, I was. I mean, it said Christian. I was like Christian. Yeah, if it said Christian, you yeah. know, you if know, it said Christian. This would be like a you know a 
very yeah. big contradiction to what you're right. writing right now. Yeah, pretty much. So, um, yeah, that's 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 interesting. It's definitely interesting. Um, she said, "Ain't no, <laughs> ain't no cheering coming out this." Place. She there basically no- said what I just. It's she a just few said, minutes no, ago. It, that, that's why it was the perfect segue. I was like, you know what? <laughs> You're walking right into something. Let's go ahead and get this done. All right, look. Oh, God. Um, yeah, I don't. Ah, man. Of course, this is doo doo. This is doo doo. <laughs> I really. It's just. Here's my thing. And I know I'm going to sound very conservative. I know I am. I'm going to sound very conservative. Very conservative. Welcome and back. It's not, Welcome back. It's, Welcome it's back. not even so. It's, it's not even so much that I, this is from a pro-life argument. Even though honestly, if I would have to pick a side, it would be. But at the same time, you know, it's not so much where I'm going to impose my personal beliefs on a woman's body, and that's my stance. You know, I believe what I believe, but at the same time, you do what you do. Um, it's just wild. It's wild to me. It just, it's just wild. Like wow. Even the lyrics, is like, here's my thing. So, she says something like, you know, he got one kid, two kids, three kids, four. All right, you know, I, and he's not getting a kid out of me, you know, right? But you know, I forgot the plan B. But it's like, but no, you still stupid because you still fucking with a nigga who got four kids, and. But- that's the life of a stripper, though. Like this, this is no disrespect. This is stripper. This, that's why I don't mind that because this is stripper music one hundred and one. They fuck with men yeah. that have four or five kids. No, no disrespect to the man that got four or five kids. This is just they are adapt to every type of man. So as long as all those men give them the money, yeah, that's true. So it was just just the lyrics for me. Honestly, have you took me out. P-Valley? <laughs> I've watched two episodes of P Valley, but at the same time, you know, I've watched those two episodes enough to where I know that's a reflection of, you know, our culture right now. Um, and there's only a handful of shows, you know, P Valley. Um, I still been uh, watching uh, rap shit, and your throw get any into that one. throw throw any power wire esque drug show snowfall you know we either selling drugs we doing this or we in some whole shit <clears throat> it was just wild to me like you know she said I got murder on my mind <laughs> <It's> like, <laughs> yo. she said I got murder on my mind yo and I'm like are, are we are That's we serious like, right now yes. you know and so it's like you know, now th- that's that's when the Black Panther social, you know, that like, that's when the Black Panther in me comes out because I'm like, yo, you dancing in front of an entity that was literally created to kill us off, like mm-hmm. Margaret Sanger or whatever her name was. She created Planned Parenthood as a eugenics program eugenics. to kill yes. off black people, and you making this rap in front of the very entity that and you like, oh, I'm about to kill another baby, ah. And I'm like, yo, that is wild. I wish <laughs> I could remember the book that I read that first introduced me to eugenics. I can't yeah. remember what it was. It, but when I read about it, I was just so like appalled. That's <laughs> crazy. And it's crazy. And just the, the amount of, you know, and again, this is not a conservative thing, but it's like, yo. For me, as pro black as I am, like the amount of black babies and black lives that are aborted a year, we wouldn't be the third population. Like Hispanics definitely wouldn't have overtaken us. And we definitely would have caused a hell of a lot more white fear that we're gonna get into another segment. Mm. This you is know, with why, our population growth. This is why we fuck with Glow Roller. Cause Glorilla yes. not only had a baby in the video, she had a pregnant woman in the video. Okay, she is supported. In- Facts, and that's why I am all for the come up of Glorilla. Absolutely. Actually, she did a uh, Cardi B done jumped on a remix. Cardi B did a remix for, her, um, and she she's getting some really good looks. Shout out to Glorilla. 
But yeah, TFNW Neek. Now, I looked up her socials. I just wanted to see how big is this person? Not so much. I got songs that has more views than her. But anyway, but yeah, like it is what it is. Literally, I have songs and music videos that has more views than her. Um, <laughs> you know, that just is what it is. But yeah, absolute doo doo. Absolute doo doo. The right. Nigerian side <laughs> was coming out just now. Man, <laughs> j- j- just a little bit. Just a little bit. So I was like, oh, man. And it, that's just absolute ass. That was so ass. Um, I right, look, let, let's go ahead and get into a little bit of something here. Um, and I know we've, we've seen this going on for weeks and weeks and weeks. Um, I want to break down the Haley Bailey, uh, casting as, uh, Ariel for the little mermaid movie that's coming out next year. It's not even out yet, but man, 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 has it come, has it stirred up a lot? And I mean, a lot of quote unquote conversation and controversy. And I just want to deep dive a little bit and, and, and go over a lot of the points that I've seen that some I may agree with and some is like, nah, that's total bullshit. So, you know, again, we're fully aware of the hoopla surrounding her casting as Ariel. Of course, of course, Haley Bailey is black and, you know, people believe that the Little Mermaid is supposed to be white. Um, So, I'm going to come, I'm going to pose a few questions that, that I personally have seen. And then, of course, we can open this up and we can, you know, do whatever we need to do to make this you know, work how it needs to work. So I, I just want to ask you guys, and this is no particular order. Anyone can, can hop on in here. Um, do you think that the white outrage, like the people that are mad, because of course it's white people. Do you think the reason they're mad, do you think it's valid? Or do you think the reason that they're so upset and up in arms, is it just blatant racism? Like let's, let's start with the low hanging fruit a little bit. Let's just see. So, Nas, nice. we'll, we'll start with you. Do, do you think there are people being mad that the Little Mermaid is black all of a sudden? Do, do you think they have a valid reason to why they're upset, or do you think they're just in their uh, prejudice? We read that tweet on the Late Night Flight. If you are yep. watching this awesome program, please check out another awesome program that is uh, from the Late Night Flight and Talk My Credo called the Late Night Flight Podcast. I read a quick tweet that uh, I'm pretty sure there was a white American that sent this to at Disney Studios asking the question, why does everything has to be black? Yeah. Unfortunately, and this is what we were talking about the disclaimer in front before we even talked about Ariel, where I was saying to white people like, look, we get down with you. But it's the institution that we don't like. And you're going to have to play the game of talk to your mans. Talk to your mans. Because you still have people that are saying blatant, racist, silly, asinine things that honestly, black people don't even care about no more. You think, yo, a bunch of black people as a whole don't give a F that Ariel is black. We don't really care. It just so happens that they got an extreme. Listen, first of all, have y'all heard this woman sing? This woman is exactly. a sensation that is like, she's not Jojo. Like she's two times better than Jojo. This woman can like really, really get down. Like this may yeah. be third coming to Whitney Houston. Okay. Like this might go down. You never know. Her sister ain't bad either. They could have picked either one. Um, so she's just talented. She's just, she's skilled. That's all it is. They could have got a Hispanic woman that could have been skilled. They, they could have got an Asian woman. It don't matter. Today, it was a black woman. Great day for Miss Bailey, and that's how we should look at that. So with all that being said, I'm going to end it like this. White people, talk to your mans and your women's, okay? They are messing it up for everybody. Realistically, no one has to care that the person is black playing the role. We could just enjoy the movie. I know you got yes. more questions, so I'll wait for those questions because I even got some deeper answers. Yes, because, you know, my thing is, you know, what happened to the I don't see color thing? What happened to that? We know. Hold up. Hey, hey, now. Hey, hey, hey. Don't make me pull a book out. Don't make me pull sorry. A book out. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You know, but that's just my thing. Well, what happened to I don't see color? That is not. But that's not a real. That, that is. But that's that's tone deaf. No disrespect to you. Yes. When uh, right. people say that, that's tone deaf one on one. When you say I don't see color, that doesn't make me as a black person like you more or feel more comfortable to be around you and make me actually right. want to run out there, like get out. You know what I'm saying? Get yep. out, sir. That's how I feel. Mm-hmm. 
Makes me yes. want to punch you so in KT, your throat, actually. When you say that. Uh-huh. Makes me want to right. punch you in your throat. Yeah. Okay. Because we know yeah, what you're saying me. when I'm you sorry. say that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes. So, I'll, I'll ask you this. <laughs> so, we know what the outrage. So, so th- this is what the white community are saying. They're saying, you know what? All this is, is just some woke agenda. It's just, they're trying to go woke and they're trying to make everything black and try to include black people. It's not even, you know, it's not even accurate. It's not even accurate to the, the source material. This is just another liberal ploy to erase white culture. What would you say to that? Do you think that's valid? Okay. Hell no, it ain't valid. Because everything been white, 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 white for so dang gone long. You know, and I, you know, I don't. I don't really like that we getting all these secondhand characters and all that. You know what I mean? These remakes Mm -hmm. or whatever. Let's get some original black characters. How about that? That's what I like. And I don't know if you have noticed, but with Disney, we may be in a film. They may center it around a black person. Why is the black person always some kind of animal or something? Like Princess and the Frog. The (laughs) full, most of the movie, the dang on princess was a frog. The whole movie, except for a few scenes where she was actually the, the, huh? The frog was the dude. No, the princess princess was the frog for most of the movie as well. Yeah, she turned into a frog too. Uh, yeah, right, I'm gonna continue. I'm sorry. I, I, and I, then I, 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 I'm not Go ahead. I'm sorry. With Soul, the movie Soul. Yes, yes. Great movie, but it was a ghost most of the time. Okay. A clear right. ghost. You couldn't mm-hmm. even see his color. And then yeah. there was the point where, when he was him, when it was the black man on the screen, he had a white woman voice. Because Sarah, Sarah, whatever her name is, well, I call her Sarah Palin because she did Sarah, it's Tina Fey, that's who. Tina Fey. Uh Because she did Sarah Palin so much, I always call her Sarah Palin. But Tina Fey, she was the voice of the black man. Like, (laughs) you know what I mean? It's always some sort of, not just a character being them a lot of the times when they do a Disney movie about a black character well, it's always some other black. thing we don't know how black this character is going to be though we just know that a black person is playing the role so we don't even know that and we don't know that until 2023 but um i, I guess but i'm this the, is what i'm saying though i'm just saying yeah. that anytime they involve black people in a disney movie a lot of times they can't just be themselves there's always there's always here some is, kind of animal involved. The, Do you yes, understand what I'm right, saying? So he, here's me. Here's me playing devil's advocate. Okay. For for one particular example that I I know that a lot of people have used with that particular perspective. Mm-hmm. Think about the most iconic character or voice in any Disney movie. A lot of people would have, if not number one, somewhere in your top three, James Earl Jones. Mufasa. Oh, yeah, right? definitely. Mm-hmm. To where everyone absolutely loves the voice of Mufasa, but of course, you know, he wasn't himself. He was an animal. He was a lion. So I've seen that before. But here is where I also uh, agree with Nas, was like with with the casting of Ariel, I don't think her skin color has to do anything with the how the depiction of how they're going to tell the story. Right. Um, and yeah, I know that. I was that just said, bringing up a point that yes, as far you know, as those who not actually really... are black, yeah, yeah, they, they they start from some lower form type thing before they actually get to be who they really are. Um, and I I I I can see that. I didn't think about it like that, but I can definitely see that. So but here's I'm, here's uh-huh, said, go ahead. Real, real, no, for you because um, we're not well, Dante, you take it away after I'm about to say this. Won't yeah. take me about 15 seconds. Because it may go to your next question of what you want to talk to us about. 
when KT had that made, made that point with everything that she just said, it, for me, my mind, I'm watching all this stuff on social media and who's making a big, you know, a big, you know, uh, about everything. No disrespect when I say this, our black American women. Uh-huh. And KT, and, and nothing, you ain't saying nothing wrong. Everything I'm with you. I mean, I disagree with you, but you said nothing wrong. I think black women have an issue with this more than black Americans as a group. I think this is more of a black woman issue. I think this, I think the, I think this may be just that representation one on one type thing. Like screw it. And it's a black woman. And what's wrong with that? It's just that. Gotcha. So actually it does segue pretty well into my next question. So my so my next question to me is actually what you you've hinted, uh you mentioned very briefly, uh, when you spoke, KT. It's like, well, should we be proud of getting these type of roles? Because, you know, of course, Luda Mermaid's been done before. You know, all these other roles that we've gotten have been done before. So it's another perspective that I've seen. Should we actually be proud that the Luda Mermaid is now a black girl uh, when we already know the story? It's been out for decades and decades. So should we be happy? Like, all right, we also had Brandy as Cinderella. Should we really be happy? You know, all right. Captain America's coming out with the movie as, you know, Anthony Mackie, you know, he went from battling Eminem to now he's Captain America now. Should we really be happy that we have a black Captain America? You know, all right. We also have been talking about Idris Elba being James Bond. Should, but should we really be happy? You know, because all these roles have been defined over the decades and decades and decades. Should we really be happy? Is this more like a secondhand role? Because we're just basically rehearsing stories that's already out there. Should we want our own? Because, hey, look at Black Panther. Should we want our own original stories? Nas, what would you say to that? I'm sorry, Dante. You know that we're cousins. Uh -huh. yep. And even though I just met you about uh, two, three, four months ago, I think uh -huh. you're a decent person. Um, I, uh -huh. I like this moonshine that you're going to send my way. All right? Yes. Uh, you invited me <laughs> to a great city, Battle League. Uh -huh. Like Stephen A., let me tell you something. I could do that. <laughs> no, no, I disagree. I just, I, I know you have a certain way of looking at this and, um, and hollering at the Queen KT when she was just talking about the secondhand uh, characters or the secondhand roles, rather. And I do understand that. I'm sorry. It's like, I, I really understand. I don't agree only because two things. Number one, you're right. Yes, we could have our own movies. No problem. Sure, sure, of course, whatever. You know what I mean? Like, of course, as we know, that's up to the black actors and directors in Hollywood that's making you. Hey, hey, it's up to you, okay? I'm that's looking at you. I'm looking at you. You know who, who your names are? I'm looking at you, all right? Yep. And so that has to just happen through the people that are the names of, you know, of that, all right? Names of Hollywood. That's number one. Number two, I don't give a fuck if a black person plays Superman or James Bond. I mean, I ain't gonna lie. If Idris plays James Bond, I'm gonna be at the movies. That's Uncle Idris, all right? I got all my swag from mm -hmm. Idris. I love Idris. That's a, he's a dope actor. Not the best, just dope. Just a, just a dope individual. Like, like I, when I see Idris, I like him because he doesn't come off like the most handsome. Just like somebody that just worked his way into his handsome. Like, he was probably ugly at 20. Ugly at 25, got a little bit better at 30, then at 40, it's like, I'm fucking everything. And I love that. Like, that, that reminds me of me. I remember my bumpy uh -huh. face ass at 21, and I see myself now, I'll be like, yes, Idris. You know what I'm saying? Anyway. <laughs> so he could play James Bond, yo. I get that. No, for real, it's, it's, it's just, I don't want us as, as our community, like, listen, we can be mad at a lot of things. Let's not be mad at this. Like, again, it's not that serious. This could have been a Hispanic girl that's playing this role. This could have been an Asian woman playing this role. It could have been a straight up Nigerian. You want me to sing her whole new world? Like, it don't matter. They would have, if she was talented, she would have got the part. Black people have invested in Disney World and Disneyland for 20 goddamn years right now. We have put, Kevin Hart has rented out Disneyland where only him and his 18 friends can go out there, okay? Like, we have done our part. We have done our part. We gave you Raven Simone, okay? We've done our part. Orlando Brown, nutty ass. We did our part. <laughs> you can put a black woman on there, and it's going to do its thing. That's all that matters. 
Oh, it's absolutely going to do its thing because even though I understand both sides of this argument, yes, I do want my original characters and original stories and blah, 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 blah. But I also understand we are only 13% of the population. And at the end of the day, the business is the business. This about making money, box office money. Now, I understand that it also is seen as a shortcut, and oftentimes it is seen as a shortcut. But at the same time, if you make Idris Elba, James Bond, guess who's going to be on the fourth row? Not the first row, because you can't hardly see. You're looking straight up. But guess who's going to be on that fourth or fifth row? Dante's going to be on that fourth or fifth row. Now, I really don't care for a black Superman. They make Michael B. Jordan Superman, whoever black person Superman, I wouldn't care for it. It's not something I would ask for, but guess who's going to be there? Because I also know the backlash is going to come. Even if my reason is going to be a petty reason, I'm still going to go and support because I know the racism that's going to ooze out of these people the same way it's been oozing out of these people with the casting of a black area, with the mm-hmm. casting of a black regular, well, a, a successful black person in Game of Thrones. Like the backlash that people has been given with a black person being casted in Game of Thrones is absolutely hilarious but his response <laughs> but his response was so was so spot on they, they talked to the to the black man i forgot this the actor's name please for, uh, forgive me but I, I know y'all know so y'all can look it up but he plays what? a black successful person in the game of thrones uh the house of dragons or something like that the house prequel of to game of thrones yes, yes. house of dragons and um get it right they asked him about the backlash that they that that's been going on with his casting and his role and he's like well Dragons, they believe in. People with white hair and purple eyes, they believe in. Magic, they believe in. But a black person, oh, now they're up in arms. It, it was the, the perfect response that you believe in all this mysticism, magic, dragons, and, and mystical creatures, and all this fantasy world, but just a simple black person mm-hmm. has you just, whoa, what, what do we have here? The right. And just like the that, there are black people in Middle Earth. Thank you. Yes. Go back to Lord of the Rings. They have a Lord of the Rings um, series. As oh, yeah, yeah, now. yeah. That's what that. I'm thinking of yep. right now. I'm thinking of, yeah, but whatever. Because yep. I've been watching both because yes. uh, that's my so, kind of thing. So, so right. They have a black elf, a black person cast it as an elf. Mm-hmm. They're not even a super major important role, but he's just black and he's an elf. And, there's, and they're losing their goddamn mind. And it's crazy. <laughs> Yeah. So it's like you know, like I don't, I don't care for it, but at the same time, I do see the racism in it. I do see the insecurity in it. I do see the fear in it, and it's these particular out outrages and and backlashes that causes the Buffalo shooting. Can can I just? I'm I'm, I'm just gonna take it there. I mean, I mean, gonna, yeah, that's fine. You can take it there, but uh, uh, but again, I'm gonna I'm gonna have to applaud the white casting. For putting someone like Steve Tuasad, that's his name, uh, from the yes, House of Yes, who's yes. A, who's a British, he's a black British brother. Mm-hmm. So yes. I'm pretty sure he understands the story of medieval times and blah, 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 if you're in that area, in that region. Um, so, hey, he, again, it's like black people going to say it's about representation. And, and, I, and I get that. I just don't, I don't want us to get too smarty art about it. I just want us to just mm-hmm. relax and realize it's 2022 when we're in a world where there's black, even though we're still 14% of this population in this country, they know black people are all over and the black, and hey, listen, it's not even about the black dollar yet. Hopefully that'd be the next question. It's not even about the yep. black dollar. It's just the fact that if we're, if we're going to quote unquote promote a, I say quote unquote promote, yeah, quote unquote promote, that's what we're doing, a diverse nation with some people that don't look like you on there. You're going like, right. it's going to happen, it's inevitable, it's nothing that you can do about it. Right. Yes. And that's I what, agree. That's, that's just how I look at it. You know what I mean? Like, and I get that we don't want a black Superman. Honestly, do you need a black Superman? No, you don't. No, you don't. So, you, you got to be smart about. The decision, like realistically, a black Captain America doesn't make sense. You now that's where you did it for the quote unquote black dollar. Now realize it's only forty eight million of us. Now you want forty eight million people at your box office? I thought you wanted two hundred million people at your box office. You got to uh-huh. figure out what makes sense in the time that it makes sense. James Bond, black, I'm cool with. Black Batman, it's like why? I don't need that. Girls, right. Like, I don't need that. Shut up. Give, give, um, 
Miss Bailey, when she wants to be a superhero, she could be Rogue. She could be Ju- Jubilee. She could be Storm. I don't care. They can make her own new character. All right? Like a brand new Marvel character strictly for black women. Do that. But don't Facts. sit there and, and make this... Uh, uh, I don't want this to, I don't want us to, well, we, we can make it the question about the black dollar, but I'm going to give white people a, 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 a small, very minute pass and be like, nah, this ain't about the black dollar because ain't enough of us for their dollar in the first place. Right. I agree. Now, um, even though that is the next question for us, is it about the black dollar? Um, I'll go ahead and piggyback off of that, that I don't think that it is about the black dollar, um, but at the same time, you know, we still have one of the most impactful spending power mm-hmm. in America. But also with that said, you know, we're just compared to a, an, an emboldened group of people, especially people who feel like this is some sort of a threat to them, because I also agree with you. Like I, I see both sides to, to all of these arguments here. I see both sides and I find myself right in the middle of every last one of them to where, no, I don't think it's that serious, but it's that serious because they made it that serious. Mm-hmm. They, they're quote unquote outraged because they made it that I was like, because y'all want, y'all want to say, I want the person that is best suited for the job to get the job. That's what you've always said. Mm-hmm. You, you don't want affirmative action, but y'all, y'all look at, at Haley Bailey as basically an affirmative action casting. But it's like, as you said before, who, can sing and perform better than Haley Bailey for this role right now. I ask anybody who's listening, give me a name who can sing and perform better than a Haley Bailey. There's nobody. She, in my opinion, yeah, she is the best person, the best casting for that job. She's young. She fits that, that dynamic, what they're looking for. A young, um, naive girl mermaid girl under the sea who's who's infatuated with life outside the sea and she wants Mm -hmm. to do whatever it takes to get up there and she falls in love with the guy and 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 the story tells itself who's better they can perform that role and sing no one can sing better than that girl hey t can do this role on a wednesday it's no problem like who (laughs) Y'all so stupid. Y'all so stupid. So and that's why, like, no, it's, it's not that serious. When I saw it, when I saw it, I was like, oh, yeah, that, that's pretty dope. When I saw it. But then, you know, I see all the backlash. Oh, it was not, you know, related to the source material. Well, first of all, the Disney movie is not the source material of The Little Mermaid. Let's just call it for what it is. Mm-hmm. Let's, let's call it for what it is. The source material goes to the Mediterranean Sea, and that is surrounded or right in between Europe, Asia, and Africa. That mermaid can be any color if you want it to be, but like it can be anything if you want it to be. But and I like the meme that says uh, all the black people y'all threw in the ocean. Y'all surprised that there's a black mermaid. Uh, Yep, I saw that too. Mm. And but here here is my ultimate thing about it. Why I feel as far as the reason for the white backlash, I feel like you know there is some merit to the quote unquote ploy to, you know, put a black person to everything. Just like you said, for a black James Bond, sure, ain't no problem. Hey, I think that'd be dope. But a black Superman, black Batman, why? You know? And I do that and I do think there are a lot of instances where it is just why? You just want to put a black person just for the sake of let's make this a black person. I'm like, okay, I, I don't care for the 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 tokenization, if you will, of it. But at the same time, if this person's the best suited for the job and they happen to be black, then damn it, that, that's who's best suited for the job. But with that said, I do feel like it is out of white fear. They think anything that is quote unquote erasing their culture, as I hear them say a lot of times, is and what is your anything culture, and this this <laughs> yes, and this is what um what I talk with uh with boss lady about. Shout out the boss lady up in Grid City, where it's like I am not anti white, I am pro black. That is not synonymous. Me wanting the best for my community to to finally, you know, get on a path of true black excellence, not posing naked in front of college statues and shit like that. Um, it <laughs> does not have to come at white people's expense. You know, like our um, our progress 
doesn't come at your expense. And I think that's what a lot of white people feel like. Anytime mm-hmm. black people are placed in a prominent position, it it will be at their expense. So if you give black people power, that means we lose power. I feel that's how a lot of people think. Mm-hmm. Well, I know white culture is basically set up right now. This is about survival for them. They need to survive. Now, now if, if, yeah. if white people want to meet us in the middle, I will say this. How about uh, a boss lady? Maybe you want a child. What's up? <laughs> <laughs> that's how we go. <laughs> that's that, that's how we making America great. That's how we gonna make America great again. We gonna make these little <laughs> <things> out here. <laughs> we gonna start having gonna have these light skinned and brown babies up in here. That, that that's how we gonna fix America. <laughs> hey hey hey! You're not gonna <laughs> disrespect my white black baby like this. <laughs> oh oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> Oh man, but honestly, that, that, that's what I feel like boss lady they have. It, no. it, sh- shout out to Boss Lady for real. Shout out, we love you, girl. Um, but honestly, I be- I believe that is their belief that you know black people are taking over because again, I tell y'all, I told y'all this story before, where a classmate of mine, where he was afraid of the presidency of of Obama and why he didn't like Obama because he thought he was making America less white. To where they feel like they are being wiped out. That's why you had Charleston and the chance you will not replace us. That's why you have the manifest the, the manifestos and the again the Buffalo shootings because they feel like anything that quote unquote replaces them literally replaces them and you're giving them power and taking power away from us. That's why reparations hasn't happened and all these other things because they truly believe this is about survival and if you give them power, the power will come at the expense of us and we have to make sure that the superior place is given to the white man. And that's quoted by uh, the great Abraham Lincoln. All right. And I'm done. And that's, that's it. That's all I have to say about that. I just want to say one more thing. Just to piggyback on all open it up to y'all. <laughs> <laughs> Any last statements with, uh, you know, opinions, comments, concerns. What do y'all think about this? Y'all close it out. Um, I'm tipsy. So I ain't got you just, <laughs> you tipsy. Listen, yeah. th- this thing is I'm almost trying to gone. Keep my focus at this point. I'm just like, yeah, this, this, this is almost gone. So there's a, a an idea with this old smoky banana pudding moonshine. You know, I'm thinking about putting it on ice cream. I'm, I'm, th- I'm thinking of all you know different type of things I could put it on, make a nice little ice cream slushy type of thing, if you will. And yeah, uh, Nas just do a, a yeah, not Nas, Nas, Nas just just short it out, but it's all good. So that that's just it, man. I know there's just so much more that we can say about this topic. Um, and yeah. it's, I feel it, like it's, it's pa- Black Panther changed a lot of uh, stuff. I do. I because feel like it, if did. It, it really made the, you know, Hollywood realize that, oh, this is really sell. Like this, this can really sell. This is really in. Like Black people can really make us some money. And yeah. I feel like that is why they have started, you know, revamping stuff and be like, oh, let's cast a black person. And yep. while I love representation, I love being able to see people, you know, black people have opportunities to play these roles that they wouldn't otherwise get to play. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I feel like in a way, they're being used, you yes. know. So yes. it's just kind of a catch twenty two. It's like, okay, well, you know. Yeah, that's that's kind of how I and, see um, it too. Yeah. Where it's like, I'm glad that we have, you know, representation, but it is, but at the same time, I also know that the business part is kind of exploiting it, and that's just kind of how I see it. White America is acting like the stupid ass person on Facebook that wants to say everything about everything, don't have any journalistic credibility, don't have any journalistic truth, don't even have no fucking resources or sources behind any type of opinion that they have, but they get 70 likes. That is white America as the institution. When they sit there and tell you, oh, the black man is taking over. And then when I have to sit here and watch college football on Saturday and I'll be like, what the fuck are they talking about? It is a sea of white people in here. 
The only black people that's here are the ones that on the fucking field like it was slave time. This is bullshit. Don't say that stuff. Now, I mean, and, and, and that's just where my homegirl boss lady, like, I hope you don't get mad over that. You got to realize the truth behind that. Right. Black people realize that we are in a numbers game, but the problem with us as a as the community is that we're too focused on that and not focused on us. If we're so the black dollar and this co- this is worth so much money and we got our own abolitionist stuff going on with our own black dollar, then use it like that. Stop asking. Stop making the white people like like when white people give me a statistic about black money on MSNBC. I'm like, how the fuck they know? I mean, they know, but how the fuck do they get to say this shit and know about it? Like, they just get to walk around in Newark and Shelby or whatever and just be like, hey, black person, what's going on, Abdul? You know, it's me, Jessica. Just want to know. Hey, how much money you got in your pocket? And we tell her. Bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, bullshit. So, yeah, I, I, that's why I don't really care. Like, like for me, I think it's awesome for Miss Bailey. Shout out to you, Miss Bailey. You're a talented soul and you deserve everything that's coming to you. Right. Um, to the black mothers that is going online, because you we live in an online world, so they on their phone. Yay, daughter, go. Hey, you said she looked like you, right? Yeah, look, I'm going to record right now. You just go ahead and say it. Go ahead. Hey, mom, little Ariel looks like me. Yes, black representation, y'all. And we go off, we go crazy. Now, mind you, it's, it's nothing but happiness for that mother, no doubt. But it's what, it's what white people see. They don't understand what the happiness is about. They just like right. some bullshit. They just go online, just mad. Just some bullshit. Fuck that. Who told them to go ahead and, and, and make a TikTok video about my they black daughter getting representation? Fuck that. What's, what's up with my daughter? Like your daughter been getting representation for fucking hundred years. Shut up. Relax. It's not that big of a deal. Annie was black. I didn't hear nobody go crazy about Annie. Jamie Foxx played the father, the adopted. Like, what, what, what are we talking about here? Why are we even making this a thing? Annie was a big time movie. All right, relax. It's, it's just not Danny, that serious. It's just not that serious. You know what? I tell you what. Whenever Mariah Carey is ready to make her biopic, and y'all want somebody like Jessica Lawrence play her, guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna go watch. I'm gonna just watch. I don't care. Don't get Jennifer Lawrence to go. She's a good actress. She's a great actress. Give a fuck. I'm so done with you. The story of Mariah like, Carey. <laughs> Starry Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> I don't give a fuck. Go ahead. Do that shit. You're going to die that girl here black. <laughs> <laughs> I can't wait for the part with Nick Cannon. Nick Cannon going to play the part of Nick Cannon. He's like, I've been busting anyway. I might as well. <laughs> I, can, I can play my own part now. <laughs> oh, God. He in the oh, studio no. making some corny ass rap talk about some <laughs> oh, Mariah here. <laughs> oh no. Jennifer Scarlett Johansson Lawrence is out there just <laughs> you make <Nick>. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm done. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, y'all. I'm sorry. <laughs> Listen, y'all. Hey, that 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 wraps it up. That wraps it up, man. We we got nothing. Listen. This episode is brought Drake to you. was played by James Franco little brother, Dave Franco. I'm good for that. I'm here for it. Go ahead. It works. It works. It's either him or me. It works. Why not let fake Drake play Drake? I'm just saying. You let fake Drake play Drake. <laughs> Listen, this episode is brought to you by Old Smoky Banana Pudding Moonshine. Find it at your stores near you. I'm going to have that on the next episode. Yeah, I I cool. We'll see if I get through the the episode that time. Yeah, listen. The episode... What what episode is this? I forgot the... uh, 95, damn it. 95. 95. (laughs) 95, episode 95. So listen, we appreciate y'all checking us out, man. This is your boy, Dante. My man, Nasur Nuru, the greatest any badger to ever live. But I'm about to have him on that old smoky moonshine. And uh, <laughs> KT, my girl, man, we appreciate y'all. Listen, y'all check us out on all streaming platforms, Spotify, Apple, Google, Stitcher, all the other places. If there's a streaming platform that plays podcasts, 
You can find the Talk My Credo podcast. You can find the Late Night Flight podcast. On you, Planned will. Parenthood. you can find me at Planned Parenthood. Yeah, you can find that too. Mm. <laughs> but once again, man, check us out on no. all streaming platforms. Check us out on YouTube at Talk My Credo. Swallowing all Avengers. your children, honey. <laughs> Man, we appreciate y'all. So until next time, y'all stay fly, stay blessed. Peace out, y'all. <laughs>